I am in my camper. This is an MPG camper. It's 28 feet long, and I've had it for just over a season and a half, so just over about a year and a half. We've used it 10 times in that year and a half. We have this list here. These are things that I either need to fix or want to upgrade. And on the need to fix list, these are all things that are underlined in orange, which we'll go over, that came right from the vendor or the factory broken. These are things that we did not notice or know to look for on our initial inspection when we went to buy the camper. Uh, I will tell you that for $38,000, I would expect these things to not be a problem. Uh, however, they are. I did not give my dealership the opportunity to address these items. I never told them about them. I never took the camper back. We never winterized it. I did all that myself. And I am going to fix these items and I'm not going to go back to the dealership. In my specific case, I didn't notice some of these items until several times after using it. And these are items that I suppose they could say, well, I damaged. So it just wasn't worth the argument. But I will tell you for a fact that if they're underlined in orange, they were broken right from the factory. So one of the first things we're going to tackle is fixing these storage areas above our couch. You can see I already have one door completely removed because of how the hinges apply and how the tensioning is done um, for the system. Now, they ripped out because of... Well, you can see how crooked this is. So on this side, there's a this spring tension thing. And that has too much spring pressure on it. So it basically, when you open these, it rips out the hinges. The spring tension on this stupid spring-powered strut, plastic spring strut, is what caused these doors to rip off the hinges, which, for a $30,000 camper, is irritating, to say the least. So this is the old hinge, we're taking these out, but I'm going to use this to line up the new hinge with. Before I continue attaching the hinges, I'm going to go ahead and mount this one to make sure that my alignment is all good. I don't. I hate to go do that on the other two and then find out these were in the wrong place. All right, well, through that very painful hour-long process of removing all the old stuff, drilling, pre-drilling, getting all the new hinges installed, we have these really nice, very expensive, nice new hinges in, which don't require this extra goofy spring-loaded piece of junk. They're into the solid wood. Close and open properly. So this is one of the items we're taking care of. We got a piece of trim that has fallen down in the camper and we're gonna get the brad nailer out and get this thing locked back up in place and put a couple brads in there and uh, get that finished up. All right, well, that is put back in place. Pretty happy with that. Well, I finally get to check stuff off the list. So that's exciting. So we have the replace the cabinet hinges. Trim above door. Two down, a bunch more to go. Well, we're gonna fix this nasty gap and the edge banding on the counter in the island. So when they installed the edge banding, they clearly cut several times and didn't measure at all. 
So what my intention is, is to use some JB Weld and fill up most of this and let it harden. So my hope is to flow JB Weld down inside of there and then work this tape up as we come through this mess of crap. Okay, well, we're basically gonna let that dry. I believe I filled in the void as much as I possibly can. It's time for the big reveal. So this is cured up enough where I can pull the tape off. Well, I don't know what I think. I think it's right here. But I think we're gonna call that good. I think it's, I mean, it's nice and smooth across here. That's for sure the tape worked really well. I think we're going to call that good and done. And this is the vanity. And around the vanity, this edge banding was incredibly poorly installed. This is actually something I believe the dealership that we bought from tried to hide. They used silicone caulking to try and cover this up. All right, you see this gap all along here? You can see how poorly this is attached. You see this white junk? This is silicone caulking. Dealership tried to squished in in here and keep this in place and they did it again they crammed white caulking back here in this corner trying to fill up this big gap so we're going to go ahead and remove this hopefully and try and save it so part of the problem is bending around these corners which is what caused it to pull away in the first we're going to relieve areas around the corners on the inside of this so that they'll bend around the corners and have less stress trying to pop them and push them all off the counter So my hope is by allowing this to bend a little easier, it will lay down nice and tight. Definitely does. We are going to be using wood glue. I got mixed feelings about what to use, but this is what I've got and I think it'll work. Hopefully this goes well. I'm not so sure it's going to, but we're going to try. moment of truth. We're going to pull this stuff off and see what it looks like. Except for a little leftover silicone from the first patch job. That actually turned out really well. Well, as you can see, there is really no gap left between the front edge banding and the countertop. Um, in this area in particular, and around the corners, it was really, really bad. So, uh, so we got the bathroom countertop done. We also got the trim around the kitchen sink done. I think now we're going to investigate the door hinges and the underbed access. And possibly the storage under the dinette. So storage under here. I want a door to stay wherever I let go of it at. And in this instance, you can see the door always closes. So I'm going to grab a screw gun and get these things taken apart. These things are the cheapest possible hinge you can possibly buy. And you can see that there's no resistance with this. Basically what I've decided is I'm gonna go ahead and use my vise, compress the round part on the hinge, this section here, around the pin because the pin is not removable, and it will basically crush the pin on these two sides and lock it in place, and then I will lightly crush the center part to create tension, and hopefully with a set of two under more tension, we won't have this problem, which is wobbly hinges. but it's under tension at this point.
It's time to take a turn on the storage. Uh, it needs to be just a little bit more convenient. Well, I went down to the store and I picked up uh, two piano hinges. That's these long uh, hinges. Cut it off right about here. So we got a mark on our plastic, but that'll be fine. We're gonna go run it through the bandsaw. Well, there we go. All right, we're going to go ahead and install the gas strut. So we're gonna get this opened up. Gas struts, these things. You might see these on like a truck canopy. Uh, they use them in campers a lot, so if you're watching this, you probably are familiar with these a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and install this one kind of in this position here to allow this to stay open when we lift it up. So now we have a gas strut that keeps this open. So by pushing on this edge, because you will access it from this side, it stays open. So you can get in that a little easier. So that's all wrapped up. We can throw the cushions back on. Well, I'm gonna move on to a few of the wiring problems we've got. This bench right here and this bench right here have decorative lights underneath of them. There's a light switch over there above the couch that uh, is supposed to turn these lights on and it doesn't, it doesn't work at all. Let's see if we can fix them. We've got a mess of wiring. We've got some supply lines. Basically, I need to get this stuff rerouted and then secured to this in such a way that when we store things in here, this wiring isn't getting damaged in any way. meter out and we're going to cut off the end we're going to check it to see what it comes out at so we're right at 12.64 volts which is perfect and we're going to stick them down inside these connections because these look shitty but they're working they're working 12.65 so we know we're we know we're good here and we're going to check here 12.85 so all our connections are good, which makes me concerned that this little tiny wire that goes to the LED strip that's underneath of this piece of wood right here makes me think that this LED strip is no good. Well, there you go. So the obvious issue was the connection in here was bad, which is really good. We're gonna go turn off the light switch, wire it all this together, and get this all cleaned up and snugged up where it belongs. All right, so we fixed the light and we got the wiring all nice and tidy so we can use this as storage. If anything lands over here, it's not gonna damage or hurt anything. One of the most ridiculous things is our battery on off switch. Now I realize you should be able to remember this and it just seems like we can't, both of us can never determine if out is on or out is off or in is on or out. You know what I mean? We just it seems ridiculous that we want to label this, but we're going to. I'm going to go make a little label for this thing and put it on here. We're going to go make a label that says out, on, in, off. out is on and the in is off. So we made a little uh, vinyl decal on the sticker maker like you saw and we're gonna go ahead and put that thing on here. So it's nice and small. I'm a big fan of these vinyl 
stickers um, or decals. They work really well. The, the cutter I use works really well. Original stick white lettering. My wife's not a big fan of that orange, but in is off and out is on for this switch. And now we have it labeled. Well, we're making pretty good progress. Change the door hinges completed. So that's done. Label battery disconnect complete. Uh, lights under dinette. That has been fixed. The storage under the dinette we have just completed. So that's where we're at. This is going to complete part one of the trailer modifications and upgrades and repairs. I hope you guys got some good stuff out of this. There's just a lot of stuff to go over and the video is getting a little long. Overall, a lot of this stuff went really well and we've used the camper since I've made these modifications and they are phenomenal. They have made the camper a lot more functional and fix some of the things that needed to get repaired. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Definitely hit that subscribe button. It always helps me out in the long run. Check out some of these other links. I'll have my house series up here and the garage series of videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.